for those of us that are more deeply in a spiritual path, we don't want to be doing spiritual bypass, right? There's that. But at the same time, as you go deeper into your own understanding of your own divinity, you understand that all things are connected. And you realize that, let's say, 10,000 people meditating somewhere is definitely affecting what's going on there. In fact, there are people right now that are leading those kind of processes. I heard recently that I can't, I'm trying to think of the name of the spiritual teacher has organized in India to bring together, I believe, 10,000 people to meditate right now for 30 days. So prayer and meditation, the inner technology that we work with, does have an effect. We don't want to be leading without that right now because you can't stay centered. You know, your commitment has to be, uh, has to be. On the spiritual path, your ultimate commitment is to love. Right. And to understand that the profound woundedness of other human beings is what creates the, the things they're doing. But that doesn't mean we don't stop them. You don't give the alcoholic the keys to the car, right? You don't. You take the keys away and you make sure that he rehabs himself before he gets to drive again. I think that's a good analogy. So, but each of us has a slightly different destiny in this place because some people are meant to march in the streets and others aren't. Other people are doing uh, special ceremonies for peace and, you know, or or like in your own case, raising children in a certain way. You have to know who you are and what your particular dharma, we would say in my yogic practice, but what your dharma is and become true to that and to listen to that. So some people will stand up and be much more uh, aggressive in what they might say, I suppose, although I don't, I, I don't like the word aggression. I think that when you're speaking truthfully, it might be animated, it might have a very strong vibration about it. So we don't want to beget more violence. That's absolutely true. So many lessons, isn't there? I, I don't know why this is coming to mind, but oh God, I think I was about 30. I was putting on a whole musical in Vancouver called Earthshine. And we had a cast of like 30 people. And I was directing it and we were co-writing it. And I mean, we had this major show coming together. But I started every rehearsal with us sitting in a circle, making prayers for Mother Earth, because we're about Mother Earth. And then everybody had to, to share anything that they had judgments or conflicts about with each other before we started the rehearsals. And this whole thing started unfolding that was like miraculous. We started creating at a level that was almost impossible. So within, I think... Three months, we created a musical that was like hair or something in New York City. It was profound. Like it was sold out on opening night. But the reason I'm sharing this is because at one moment, there was a mutiny. Like the piano player who had all the music in her head just went into this huge competition thing. And like her and one other person who will not be named, they went into this kind of like rebellion. And I remember thinking, oh, my God, you know, we can't have these people quit because we, we won't be able to, you know. And so a group of us went off and made prayers for those two people because they left a rehearsal. We went off and, I don't know, we just focused light and love on these people for about, I don't know, half an hour or something. And after the break, they came back and they were totally, they totally let go of everything. And they... It just showed up and got involved. And we ended up having this extremely successful musical. But I learned so much from producing that musical that, that was for life. Like the lessons just never stopped in that, and then creating that production. But, but, but of course, you know, when you're dealing with something as severe as things that are happening in Iran, things that are happening in, in Gaza and Israel right now, you know, I, again, I think individually, each of us decides what we need to be doing or what we're being called to do or not do and how we're being called to do it or not do. And how do we start to live with less fear? 
And how do we train our minds to imagine consistently a positive out? Because one of the real wars you have to deal with is the negativity within oneself. All the judging and, and self-violence that comes from the shadow. Attacking, self-attack is still attack. Right? Stop the war on self. Even doing that is a major accomplishment, isn't it? But the inner and the outer are connected. So as we bring our own beings into a state of more peace, we do contribute to the peace of humanity. But that doesn't mean that some people won't take very strong action. So I'm, I'm not sure there's totally, you know, I'm not sure that I am can answer that, that, but we can all bring inquiry to that, right? But I have a great deal of faith in the children that are coming, and especially the young boys that are coming, because they are much more balanced in their masculine and feminine. So we want to inspire also that within the men in our lives.